In this episode, we look at potting soil from one of my houseplants under the microscope. And in case you are thinking, potting soil? That's just boring brown dirt. Then I can assure you that you are completely wrong. I mean, at first glance, it's true. It is brown dirt, but it is anything but boring because it is full of life. You will be surprised how many microorganisms live in the soil of your houseplants. Here I collect some of the potting soil, which we'll take a closer look at in a moment. I also put some of it in this little jar, but in this case I mixed in some tap water. This will hopefully bring some microorganisms back to life. But now let's look at the dry soil, which we collected first. Potting soil is an industrially produced, humus-rich substrate aimed at providing the best conditions for optimal plant growth. Humus itself is formed by the decay of organic material. Additional wood fibers in the soil, like these, will allow the plant to root more easily. I spent hours carefully observing the collected soil in my jar. And while doing so, I encountered two crawling guys particularly often. This is our first candidate. Not exactly a pretty sight. In a previous episode about house dust, we already dealt with the dust mite and now we are dealing with the mite again. While dust mites are annoying little beasts that can cause allergies, this predatory mite is rather useful. They hunt, kill and feed on various pests that are harmful to our houseplants. Nevertheless, their appearance is rather unpleasant, especially when you look at them with a microscope. Their bodies are covered with pointy bristles. And all those stents in the exoskeleton kind of remind me of a golf ball. But their scissor-like mouthparts are the worst thing to look at. This is the stuff nightmares are made of. Thankfully, our second candidate doesn't look quite as scary. So, say hello to Wendy, Wendy the Woodlouse. Actually, I don't know why I named her Wendy, but she somehow looks like a Wendy to me. And yes, she is female, I checked it. Woodlice, like this one, belong to the order of isopods. They are the only crustaceans that live permanently on land. Finding them in potting soil is not a bad thing, as they are considered beneficial species because of their decomposing abilities. These two little arms that peek out from under the head are actually her antennae, her sensory organs, so to speak. With them, she can perceive the environment around her. On her abdomen are these two long and spiky looking parts. They are called uropods. In most aquatic crustaceans, they are used for locomotion. But in this case of land-dwelling woodlice, they serve the sense of touch. On her belly, she has seven quite hairy pairs of legs. With them, she can run pretty fast, if the surface is not as slippery as the one here on my microscope slide. Whoops! Here you can see a prepared slide with a sample of the water I soaked the potting soil in. Now let's see if we can spot some life in it. At first, you see small plant remains, but in between, you can already observe the first microorganisms. 
We will now take a closer look at a few of these fascinating, but also really fast, little creatures. This aquatic microorganism is a rotifer. Rotifers are also called wheel animals, and the name fits perfectly, because they each have a wheel-like structure on their heads that is covered with fine hair-like filaments. They are also filter feeders. Using the wheel, rotifers swirl their water around them to gather food, such as algae and bacteria. They are also the real sleeping beauties. Biologists have been able to revive rotifers that had been frozen for 24,000 years. Tough little critters, aren't they? This little guy here probably never sits still. He's always zooming back and forth, making it really hard for me to get some nice pictures of him. This nimble fella is a crustacean larva. More precisely, it is a nucleus, the larva of a copepod. Striking are the two pairs of legs, which are actually antennae and mandibles, and they are used for swimming and feeding. They feed on tiny plankton organisms that they catch with their mandibles. To me, this cute little guy seems almost playful as he circles these plant chunks over and over again at top speed. And then I came across this moving blob that you can see here in the middle. You probably know what this is, right? It is an amoeba, a single-celled organism, with the superpower of shapeshifting. I'm not 100% sure, but I believe it belongs to the genus Pelomyxa. They can be found in fresh water, usually buried in mud. Some amoebae of this genus can grow so big that you can see them with the naked eye. Their diet consists of a variety of foods, such as algae or even dead organic material. Here our amoeba is about to encounter a euglenid, another single-celled organism which is trying to escape with the help of its whip-like flagellum. Fortunately, both survived the encounter unharmed. And finally, let's take a look at this warm-like creature. I could find many of them in my water samples. There were a bunch of small ones, but also some really huge ones among them. They are called nematodes and can be found everywhere, whether in the sea, freshwater or terrestrial ecosystems. Most of them are harmless and feed on microbes, algae or fungi. However, there are also parasitic species that can infect humans. Here you can see a particularly large nematode. With its longitudinal muscles, it skillfully slithers its way through the plant particles. As you can see now, potting soil isn't just some boring dirt. You can find a lot of interesting little creatures in it. From the shape-shifting amoeba up to the real sleeping beauties. There's so much life in potting soil that I'm sure I can create another episode about it. And if you already like this episode and don't want to miss the next one, you should subscribe to my channel now. I'm also on Instagram. If you want to follow me there, the link is in the description. 
Thanks for joining me today and hopefully see you next time.